Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's Lemongrass. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's Lemongrass is a green ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples, I put the ink into a different pen for a day, I then put it into a Noodler's Nib Creeper to take my notes for this video. Now, before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this kind of peachy color across the bottom, this very light pinky peachy type color. It moves up into a green and then this very light blue across the top. So not just a green dye, but a very nice mix. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And it looks the same, except the line across the bottom looks a slight bit darker, a bit more pink, showing a little bit of maybe it would want to stay, but I don't think so. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. Now, I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles it very well, especially considering a lot of Robert Oster's inks are not very resistant, but this handled it very well. It did turn from being an extra fine to more like a fine writing, but it's completely readable. It's The notes are protected. I feel confident using this in a note-taking situation. Water reactivates and lifts most of the ink. We see the dots of the rhodia paper coming through, but we have very light green still left behind. Pen flush did everything water did and a little bit more. We start to see some of the white of the paper coming through, which makes me say pen flush is all that you should need to get this out of your pen. And bleach, as would be expected, completely lifts it off the paper. Please don't use the bleach solution to get this out of your pen. Now for the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5 and the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's Lemongrass has a viscosity of 2.06, making it a wetter ink, but just a little. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Robert Oster's Lemongrass has a dry time, or an average dry time, of 20 seconds, making it normal, the very high side of normal, but still normal. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet Extra Fine. Let's take a look at Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It has really nice shading throughout. It starts dark in the Robert. It gets light to the O, dark at the B, mid-tones in the ERT part. Really nice shading throughout the whole 1.1. The Extra Fine becomes a noticeably darker tone with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, it does offer us some shading. The word quick is much darker than the word brown, which is a mid-tone. Fox is a very light tone. Jumps, starts light, and works its way up to dark again. So we get all different forms in words. It's great. 11 seconds to dry. Now the same tone that we're getting with the extra fine we get with the medium. It has no feather spread. Halo sheen. It does have nice shading. The really nice shading that's going on, we get the same thing as with the 1.1. Quick is a very dark word. Brown starts dark and gets light. Fox starts light and gets dark. Jump starts light and gets dark. Very nice stuff. 20 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine shows us no color variation, and the scrubby of the medium shows us very little color variation. But we got much more in the actual writing sample. And the smear test, I believe you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Tomoy River. We have no bleeding. Yes, the scrubby's starting to come through. I put it on stupid thick there. We have no, we have ghosting. 
The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a little bit darker of a tone with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, and 19 seconds to dry. The medium a darker tone again with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, and 37 seconds to dry. My goodness. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you can't recover it. So Rhodia. Rhodia paper has no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, very little shading. It does have moments of some darker spots. The B in Robert looks slightly darker. The A in Grass looks slightly darker. So there's moments of it, not really very much. The Extra Fine is a darker tone. It's a nice mid-tone looking at all of this. The Extra Fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen. It does offer some shading, not tons, but brown starts really dark and gets really it gets to a mid-tone. Quick is a very dark tone, but Fox is almost all a very light tone. So it's nice. It's not as much. It's pleasant. It's gentle in its shading. And 13 seconds to dry. Now the medium. The medium is a much darker tone than we got with the extra fine. It had no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium. The scrubby, uh, the extra fine, if you look far left to far right, you see some color variation. We did get some color variation up here, not tons, that medium to darker tone, very gentle. That's not exactly on. The medium scrubby showed no color variation, we got none. And the smear test, I believe you could recover this. So Twisby notebook paper, Twisby paper had no bleeding. It did have minor ghosting. You could use the back of the page, I do. The 1.1 had no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade whatsoever. The extra fine. A darker tone, no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade. 12 seconds to dry. The medium a little lighter tone than we got with the extra fine. It had no feather, spread, halo, sheen. It had minor bits of shading, as in the CK of quick is a little bit darker. The beginning of the B is a little bit lighter in brown, then it got dark again. The beginning of Fox is a little light, and then it gets darker. We get moments of shading with the medium. 18 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine showed no color variation. We didn't get any. The scrubby of the medium showed no color variation, but we did get some. The smear test on the extra fine, I don't know that you could recover it, and I don't know why I didn't do the smear on the medium. I just missed it. Moleskin. So we got a lot of spot, spot bleeding through. It did not touch the page underneath. If this is your pocket notebook, uh, I don't know, you might be able to use this. Maybe you could use the back side. That's, you know, user discretion. I don't know that I would. It would be very distracting to me. But that's a walk around notebook and an ink. This would be okay. The medium up top, no feather, no spread, which is unusual for moleskin. No halo sheen or shade. The extra fine. It had no spread, but it has feathering all over it. The F has feathering. The is all feathered. Quick is all feathered. Fox is all feathered. Over and the all feathered. Horrible feathering all over. But again, if you had to jot a note and this was the ink in your pen, you'd get away with it. Four seconds to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. And the smear test, you could probably recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. And that's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's Bluegrass, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Now, not so much a, com a compliment, but I was thinking a really nice contrast between it. So they were very stark and different in what the writing was. I went with Krishna's Causal because it is a very nice blue ink. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's Lemongrass? I was first shocked because it was a darker tone than I was expecting to get. And that was good. And it shades the way you would hope a green ink would shade. It is very nice. This is a standout, awesome green ink, especially in a flexi nib. Thanks for watching.